Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. This is from Jose Arteaga, who is now a is patron saint of whiskey. Winchester Straight Bourbon Whiskey from Jose Arteaga. Empty glass. It smells like oh oh yeah. That's my oh man, very that very very really light on the nose, refreshing here. and light yeah. on the nose. I just put the glass to my nose out of habit <laughs> before I realized there was nothing in it. Okay, so this is another. Remember that brand that we've talked about a, a couple of times extensively, and I'm not going to go into it today, but it's Terrapure. Oh, they're trying to do the rapid aging. Yeah, they take some spirits, they start from scratch, okay. and then they take others and they start with an existing whiskey, and then they apply their process to oh, it, right? Like, okay. So this is one that's a straight bourbon, which means it had to be in barrels for two years before yeah. they screwed with it. But they've got a lot of brands okay. that they're screwing with, and this is one of them. Um, it says, you know, uh, North Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. But who knows where the whiskey's actually coming from, because it just says produced by. Like all the people who are trying to make sure. On the nose. Extremely perfumey. Mm-hmm. Floral. Usually, like most bourbons, you're gonna get a little bit more classic flavors than the floral note I'm getting out of this. I know I say classic flavors, I mean things like the um, the honey and the molasses and the brown sugar and the apple and the really oakiness. Right now, I'm just getting a lot of floral perfume on that note. I'm getting a lot of cherry, actually. Yeah. Like candied cherry. Oh, not, candy, candy. Not cherry. real cherries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, even like a candied maraschino cherry, the bright red. Mixed with vanilla. Yeah. Mixed with vanilla. Maraschino mixed with the vanilla. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe even on top of vanilla ice cream. Mm-hmm. Oh, the nose is more interesting. Yeah, and the nose wasn't even that great. Well, I thought, that, I thought the nose was a nice perfumey offering. It was okay. It was a nice perfumey offering. Yeah, it was... It was a sweet candied perfumey offering. You know what? It's that like made me nervous. It's like I dove into a shallow pool. Yeah, so you, yeah and it you, looked beautiful. Right, and then you go like, thunk, oh, oh it, yeah, it, that was it. Only that big. It is paper thin. What? I mean, it really tastes paper thin. I'm not gonna say paper thin. I'm gonna say not paper thin. Did you ever have a trapper keeper? Yeah, it's trapper keeper thin. Ah, it's a trapper. There's keeper. a lot more than just pictures. Did yours have a Velcro latch? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I totally. Yeah. Did you ever buy the ones that zip to keep all the shit in? I wasn't. You spoiled. No, if you do the one that zips, because then when you unzip it, and then things just start falling everywhere because right. you didn't actually store them. Trapper keepers. Are I love that trapper keeper came into those the are, conversation. Those are great. They're awesome. I drew pictures on. My, I had the one with the fake look like bubble pop. Remember uh, those? Yeah, yeah. Like looked like you could pop bubbles on it, but right. it was just a graphic. Yeah, those are okay. the days. Go back. 80s children, trapper keepers. <laughs> Go back and uh, less perfumey floral on the nose. Now I'm getting... I'm, I found that brown sugar and honey now. After you get that sip in, yeah. then you see in the, a little bit more it, classic it notes. It smells more like a budget bourbon. Okay. And here's the thing. It's 45%. Dude, I would rather be drinking like the cheapest Henry McKenna or like a real budget bourbon. The, this taste on this, it just, it's so watery tasting mm -hmm. and shallow, and then at the very end gets a little bitter. Yeah, I see here, I'm, I'm hesitant to say one note, because I feel like there's a few different things going on, but they don't go very far. No, and I even got a little bit of a sulfury match head. No, I didn't get that at, at all. At the back tail end of this. No. And the aftertaste. No, I'm not finding that there. All right. No, it's, it's, I'd be curious to know, like a little A-B. What did the ultra pure process start with and then yeah. what did it turn into? That'd be really know. interesting. Maybe they started with bourbon that wasn't that great to begin with. Who knows? Who knows? Um, okay, we're moving to this one. Now, I'm gonna. You know how often I sh on companies for their web copy? I kind of like this one. I don't know who wrote it, right? but keep that person in charge. Okay. Because it's. Even though it's not dramatic and amazing, right. it's just really well done. Sure. Like it's concise, they kept everything short, sure. but very clear. Very on point. No vagueness, Sure. but they weren't trying too hard. They weren't right? getting to, it wasn't a flourish of bullshit. They were getting to the yeah, point, but they were saying it in an, in an interesting way? Yes, okay. it's what I would say is the kind of writing that we teach at Wizard Academy sure. on being very concise, clear, but very visual and okay. easy to imagine. So good good writing, and I'm going to come into this whiskey too, but interesting. good writing needs to force you to your brain to picture things. 
Okay. Right? Yeah. Bad writing, you it sounds cool, but you can't picture anything. So listen to this first sentence from their from their site. Just north of the potato fields and east of the cranberry bogs is the great northern distillery. It sits at the gateway to the pineries of Wisconsin. Yeah, fair enough. Pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah. When it gets in the whiskey, it says, this is a young expression of our whiskey distilled from a weeded bourbon mash yeah. and aged in new charred American oak barrels. Even though it's technically a bourbon, the mash bill is only 55% corn okay. rather than 70 or more. We add a high proportion of wheat and rye and barley, so it's four grains, to, eschew the, to skew the flavor profile towards a smoother whiskey like Canadian style. Okay. And then we age it for about eight months in 10 gallon barrels. Okay. You cannot get more clear than that. Fair enough. On the nose, I'm not getting Canadian whiskey at all. But before you said any of that, I was still getting, wow, this is somewhat unique. This is a different angle to a whiskey. Maybe the be the bourbon. I'm getting almost like a peanut brittle, some type of nut. Yeah, yeah like a waxy, um, like, like, you know, when you actually eat the peanuts out of breaking them out of the shell yourself. Yeah, yeah. And they still taste like a dusty, salty, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But I'm also getting... Um, I'm also simultaneously, that is it, it's a dried peanut. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also getting a note of those old suckers when you, with the little loop handle, when oh. you tear the plastic off. Yeah, we are so old. Between the trapper keepers and the loop handle suckers. Yeah, but you see what I mean with that sort of like candied, hard candy sucker, yeah. sweet sugar? Yeah, and then I'm also getting, um, you said Titan New Leaves of Bourbon, I'm actually finding the brown sugar quite a bit underneath those other things we made. Now there's a little bit of that pine note hiding right in the middle of this thing, but it's mm -hmm. so buried by the other flavors. That's interesting, I like that. Oh, yeah. And then, it still has that dry peanut aftertaste though. It does. And you get this kind of, um, oh, interesting finish there. It's like a- um, sort, sort of still going. It is, yeah. What is this proof? It's only 40. Really? It's, uh, I know, right? No, no, no. The, the amount of, I saw that. The amount of complexity I'm getting out of 40%, it's impressive. By the way, this is from Terry Angler. Terry Angler, you magnificent bastard! Fight. Uh, um, so, that, uh, I don't want that. Okay, so the, the tannic element from the barrel. Yeah. That shows it's up. definitely there. It's not overwhelming, but that nice little bitter underpinning, that's there. Then the brown sugar and vanilla shows up, more so than I expected from that nose. Yeah. I wish, damn it, dude. I think this could have been... I got barrel char. Yeah. Like this time, actual smoke yeah, the second, notes at the end. The second time... That bitter tannic element shows up as actual, you know, there's wood yeah, char. Yeah, kind of woody smoky. There's wood char in there. Well, that's, that's, that's not interesting. Bad. Oh, but I will say this on the second sip, um, the complexity, it's gone. Yeah. It just kind of flattens all those flavors, and then you're left with, oh, that's, it's 40% now. And it's barrel heavy. That first sip's like, wow, it's a lot of complexity for 40%. After you get into it a little bit more, it's like, the complexity's gone. I've acclimated, I'm used to it, and I just wish there was like another 10% more alcohol in there to amp up those flavors. And as it opens, the barrel bitter moves, is slowly moving higher and higher up the flavor profile. Yeah, yeah. Like, take your next sip right now, mm -hmm. it's dominant. It's the number one thing in the glass now. Yeah, it's there. The other things, they haven't disappeared. No, no. Just take just a little, little bit places. of a back seat. And wow, that, that's bizarre. That, 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 that creamy car caramel vanilla. Yeah. That stays with it's, you. But now it's hiding. Yeah, I just wish this was like 50%. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, Obi Badad. I wish you guys would just say when something is not good, you say and say, it is not good. Stop making excuses for bad whiskey. <laughs> you have more taps on your shoes than Shirley Temple <laughs> just revealed my age. That's oh, funny. <laughs> I, if the, if it, it's not perfectly clear when we don't enjoy something, it's like, yes, yeah, it's, oh, really, it's not my favorite, it's not my go-to. But... Our rule number one is the best whiskey is the whiskey you like to drink. Yeah. The we're way you always, like to drink it. We're always hyper aware that our preference is not prescribed for the world. Well, and, and, and so when we don't like something, it doesn't mean it's it, bad. Exactly. No, honestly, that's one of the most frustrating things because I think it's a very simplistic 
glib position to take where if only I just find people that are the real experts. They'll tell me whether it's good or bad. There's no such thing. There's no such thing, man. People have different preferences. You know this. But, you know, what's your favorite food? And then ask your best friend what their favorite food is. Yeah. Who's wrong? You can't be. You can't be. No. So Every once in a while something will be so far beyond my preferences, I will come out and just be like, nope. To also acknowledge other people have different preferences. Yeah, and there are Miller. human beings that will adore that. Kurt Miller loves those whiskeys. Fair enough. See? It's like, so, I don't like that at all, but I think a, uh, a person that has a little bit more in-depth knowledge and understanding and nuance from their position will acknowledge it's not that a whiskey is inherently bad. It's that your personal preferences don't go in that direction, and other people may adore that thing. So I don't think it's tap dancing at all. No. I think it's acknowledging People have totally different priorities for what they enjoy. Can I go on record as appreciating the fact that he compared us to Shirley Temple, though? Well, that was a nice touch. You are adorable. <laughs> you are adorable. That's true. So if you want people to take, like, the soapbox of this is a bad whiskey, it's like, fine, you know. You can you, find those people. If you want to get simplistic and boil stuff down to a binary level, then have fun. Preferences are very personal. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, we got Paul Meyer. Hope you fellas are enjoying your Ireland trip. I have a question about sourcing mm -hmm. and then eventually making a shift to your own distilled and aged project does, uh, product. Does it pose a continuity issue for companies who start outsourcing so they yes. can get some cash flow while waiting for their own product to age? When you finally have a product of your own making you making to release, are you trying to maintain what you had when you were sourcing or do you just have to roll the dice and say, okay, this is us now? We're not going to have that problem. No, no, we're not. Because uh, So I have two thoughts, because I think this is actually a, the best question about sourcing. Oh. The question that the I get bored of. The continuity Yeah, question. the question I get bored of is, is sourcing good or bad? It's neither. Right. Lying is bad. That's yeah. it, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, the question that's actually valid is, if you're going to make the choice to source, right. what do you do as a brand? And yeah, yeah. I think, because you are going to have a point where you're not going to be able to make an identical flavor profile to what you are sourcing sure. if you don't live and age and use all the same equipment. And then there's going to be a point at which, even if you did get close, how do you then re-announce to the whole world, hey guys, yeah. uh, new thing, when right. everyone's like, but it looks the same, no one gives a yeah, right? yeah. I think, the, in my opinion, the best thing to do is if you're going to source, Brand it, obviously. Tell everybody what it is. Release it. Make money. Right. And then when you do your own stuff, new label. Yeah. New line of product. Yeah. New announcement. Of course. Yeah. And now you know who did this really, really well yeah. was Treaty Oak. Okay. Oh, the red-handed yes, bourbon. Yes, they the started red with red-handed. Yeah, yeah. And and when they came time to do their own stuff, sure. they didn't go, hey, guys, now red-handed is ours. They went, hey guys, Ghost Hill sure. is Treaty Oak Bourbon. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's the right way to do it. Yeah, and, and um, you know, from our own perspective and our own venture that I'm not going to get deep into, but the crowded barrel thing that we're doing, uh, that is all about just the exploration of all things whiskey. We're going to make as many things as we can. We're going to source as many things as we can. We're going to blend those things. We're going to age them in weird ways. We're going to finish them in interesting continuity ways. Continuity is not high on our priorities. No, continuity <laughs> is like the last thing on the list of priorities that we have. It's all about, hey, what can we do that's just fun and interesting with the Magnificent Bastards? Uh, so we're not worried about continuity. I mean, hell, in a lot of like a really award-winning distilleries these days, one of the things that I'm finding which is super interesting is how much they're leaning into the idea of vintage. Mm -hmm. Like winemakers, you know, year to not, year. And by the way, vintage as in year of it was produced. Yes. As opposed to not like vintage no, jackets. Winemakers, you know, oh, the, the 1972 Lafitte, that was the pinnacle of whatever from this winery. The winery embraces that. They do, because they know seasonal effects have a dramatic, you know, a dramatic effect of what's going on mm -hmm. in a whiskey there and a lot of smaller craft distilleries. Uh, I think they could take a cue from wineries. Yeah. They can learn from the history of wine in, on how to instead of stop trying to fight that. Yeah, lean in, make it a part of the story. Because line. there is there is a if you're trying to have something that's just rock solid, consistent, that's never going to deviate year from year. There is this level of critical mass you need to reach. Yeah. Well, there's so much grain being collected from so many different parts of the world that it's all going to even out to be your whiskey that everybody has known for years. I sort of wish that Balconis had done that because they uh, talk about the fact that their single malt changes slightly over time. Yeah. Um, but I wish they had raised vintages. You know who did this really, really well? Right. 
Uh, before they changed all their labels? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Bob Blair. Right? Bob Blair. Yeah, they just released year statements that had to do with this is that release. Sure. And when you went back to Bob Blair, all you needed to know was I like what Bob Blair does. Sure. And uh, but it's not going to necessarily be exactly like the last bottle that I got. Well, and and uh, when we were in Ireland, because I think that's where your question began, it was super interesting. Whenever we went to Waterford, mm -hmm. it was one of the newer distilleries there, and they are exploring this idea of terroir, mm -hmm. like um, does the landscape and the microclimate of individual. Farms and not just farms fields. Yes, just a field it, in a farm and they're tracking like day to day the amount of cloud cover and the amount of precipitation and the amount like the gradient of the hill like all that stuff is being tracked and taken into account to, to try and find um, does the farm itself uh, affect what the end whiskey can be mm -hmm. even when you're using the exact same barley strain the exact same year the exact same equipment the exact same distillation process and they were one of the distilleries that invited us to Ireland and uh, said, yeah, you guys, you're welcome to come. You do whatever you want, no strings attached. We'll take you around. That was the right answer. Uh, uh, and so I, we had a tremendous time at Waterford. If you've been watching Scotch Test, they did a whole bunch of conversations with them have come out in the last couple of weeks. Fair enough. Here's the fighting, stealing and drinking. If you fight, may I fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.